The Soviet squad leader orders his men to cover. It's time to do the sensible thing, cut their losses and pull back. The Mannerheim line has held. All right, y'all, welcome back to Comet Arms channel. Okay, so today we are checking out a video from a channel that we haven't checked out previously. So this channel is called The Armchair Historian. Now I've seen a couple of videos previously from this channel and they seem like they have some pretty solid stuff. So this one is actually an animated video comparing a Finnish squad with a Soviet squad. Now I'm guessing that's going to be focused mainly around like the Winter War, Continuation War. But yeah, we've heard a lot of crazy stories about how effective the Finnish squad was in comparison to the Soviet squad. But I guess this video was sort of summarized a little bit better. So it's about 23 minutes long. So I'll just get right into it. Try not to pause as much. So let's do it. On a backwoods trail near the Kola River, a Soviet column trudges along. Hmm. Dressed in bright reds and browns, the Russian soldiers stand out vividly against the endless dunes of white snow. Easy targets <laughs> Doesn't help. for the Finnish sharpshooters hidden in the pines. Solid animation, though. On the edge of the Mannerheim line, a Soviet conscript grips his rifle tightly, taking an increasingly ragged series of breaths to steady himself. So I really like how he's sort of explaining how tired they are and how like sort of ill-prepared they were just to be in this sort of environment against the Finns. So I kind of like how he's comparing it without actually comparing it yet. He leaps from cover, scrambling to avoid a hail of bullets from his target, a Finnish machine gun nest. Hmm. He and his comrades will take this position from the fascist lapdogs, or they will fall as heroes of the Soviet Union. And this is cool too, it's like a scenario. In the We've ruins not seen of that what before. was once the city of Vipuri, a Finnish sergeant exhorts his men to press on. Orders right. and encouragement almost drowned out by the roar of distant Katusha rockets. This is really, hand in really hand sweet. with their German allies to the south, the Finns will liberate their country from tyranny of Soviet oppression. Yeah, so I guess this is a winter war or continuation Hi, I'm war. I'm Johnson, the armchair historian. When one thinks of the Eastern Front of the Second World War, images of conflict between the ideological juggernauts of Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union spring to mind. While a critical component of the Second World War, there was another key conflict that took place in the background of the early war years. Yeah, I will say it wasn't until I started doing reaction videos where you guys actually told me about the Winter War and the Continuation War. Like, I honestly had no idea they were a thing. I didn't really know anything about Finland until I started doing reaction videos and you guys sort of recommended all this stuff. And I mean, I'm not like an expert on Finland by any means, but at least I'm aware of, you know, all the stuff that Finland has done being, you know, such a, a prominent country in World War II that I never even knew about. The Winter War between the Soviet Union and Finland. After breaking away from the Russian Empire in 1917, Finland experienced a civil war which saw anti-communists win control of the new nation. The mm -hmm. Soviet Union, who had backed Finland's communist faction, looked hungrily on the former territory of their imperial forebearers and mm. planned an invasion. In this latest episode of our Versus series, we will compare the infantry of the Soviet Union and the nation of Finland, starting in the time of the Winter War and ending okay. in the Continuation War, the yep, Finnish nice. campaign in support of Operation Barbarossa. All right, let's do it. When it comes to discussing topics like this, our researchers often find themselves having to sift through large amounts of data ranging from after-action reports and technical manuals to personal <laughs> interviews and soldiers' memoirs. For That's a long time, cool. the secrets to learning how to interpret all of this information lay in the care of academia. But with Brilliant, perfecting your analytical abilities yeah, okay. I is saw where that was going. no matter your background. Hey, I appreciate the grind. For this matchup, <laughs> we will inhabit two distinct time periods. Our first two matches will occur during the time of the Winter War, which was fought right. from November 1939 to March 1940. Defensive pretty well battle during this war. Will take place during the Continuation War from June 1941 to September 1944. These battles Another are based on conflict. Soviet and Finnish squad tactics and equipment. However, we will be discounting heavy equipment such as armored vehicles, and while the use of artillery may be hmm. woven into the narrative of the engagements, it will not be a deciding factor. As okay. always, these combat encounters are <laughs> fictional and represent our opinion based on our research and perspective. 
With that, it's time to button up and join the action in Finland, 1940. Again, really impressive animation. It's always nice to get a nice animation, especially when it's history focused. The Soviet infantry can't help but feel an odd sense of comfort as they march along a rough-hewn forest trail. The smooth white dunes, the familiar chill in the breeze, a rhythmic crunching beneath their boots. It almost feels like home, but their revere is almost. interrupted by a thunderous crack. Ooh. It's an ambush. The Soviets scramble as another shot clips the squad leader. The sergeant this is falls, cool. grasping at his arm. He's winged, but still in the fight. Okay. Hidden among the trees, a squad of Finnish... Yeah, I gotta say, it's not the best idea to be moving on a road like that. Again, it's kind of like, it's it's called an avenue of approach for a reason. You expect a lot of people to be coming here, or maybe even like a vehicle or whatnot. So setting up an ambush on such a linear target is super easy. So yeah, not the best move. Finnish infantry fire a ragged volley with their M27 rifles. A staccato chorus of reports echoing through the trees. Hmm. The right, Soviets rapid firing dive into things. the drainage ditches alongside the trail, clearing their rifles for action. One brave soul right. cautiously leans out of cover. Mosin Nagant poised to fire on the first Finn he sees, but a Finn sees him first. Two yeah, it's Soviets hard to see. down, nine to go. In a position like that, especially the if Sergeant you don't have the right orders camouflage. Covering fire while their DP-28 is set up. If they play oh, their snap. cards right, they can leapfrog away from the trail and into the other side of the trees. Yep. The Soviets fire wildly, sending an endless stream of shots towards the trees. Their shots splinter wood and churn slush, succeeding in stalling the fins for a moment. Mm. Yeah, at this point, you kind of just want to get fire superiority, and when you have most in the Gantz or yeah, any sort of bolt-action rifle, it's not going to be as easy, so you can see they're trying to get the priority on that machine gun so they can actually start bounding back and get in a better, better position. But, yeah, it's going to be kind of hard if the Finns have some nice snow camouflage because, yeah, these guys are kind of sticking out like sore thumbs. And that's all the time they need. The assistant machine gunner slaps an ammunition tray onto the DP, giving his comrade a quick tap on the shoulder. And with a high-pitched right. chug like a typewriter, the Soviet machine gun opens fire. Товарищи, вы острие копья в борьбе за освобождение мирового пролетариата, в борьбе против тех, кто мечтает навечно заковать его в цепи. От вас, как от солдат Красной Армии, ожидается, что вы будете атаковать врагов коммунизма с терпением и осознанностью. Позаботьтесь о своем оружии, и оно позаботится о вас и станет гарантом нашей победы. I don't know if they just have like really solid voice actors or this is actually audio from like some sort of recruitment video or what have you, but it's pretty impressive. Hmm. Поочередно маневрируйте и атакуйте. Okay. Не подставляйте товарищей под пули, и вы дезориентируйте противника. Это поможет продвижению вашего отряда и свершению нашей революции. It's kind of explaining the tactics here, which is kind of cool. As the DP sends a stream of bullets into yeah. the thick forest canopy, the Soviet infantry break cover to pull back toward the safety of the trees behind them. Mm -hmm. The Finns dig in, weathering the barrage. They've seen the Soviets' tactics before and know that their moment will come. Hmm. The sergeant calls to his men, and they take cover among the snowdrifts to lay down cover with their Mosins. As the DP gunner and his assistant rush to catch up with their comrades, a group of Finns sortie from the trees, skiing oh, into position geez. behind a low stone wall. Oh, snap. One brings up his KP-31 submachine gun, racking it around from his impressive 71-round drum magazine before 71? sending out a wide spray, firing his compact SMG like a squad support weapon. 
Good grief, that's a the lot wild of ammo. The fusillade sends the two-man Soviet LMG team scrambling, keeping their heads mm. down as they desperately try to cover distance as their Finnish enemies and Soviet comrades exchange fire. Lucky shots. Honestly, this is like a pretty realistic simulation of how an ambush like this would go down. It would be extremely violent. But honestly, I would imagine that they would have taken more casualties early on, but I guess they're just trying to let it play out so we can see both of their equipment. Down a pair of Finnish riflemen, and the Finnish squad leader signals his men to advance. The Finns have the initiative, and they intend on keeping it. So I guess they're going to the be maneuvering. As the Haggard LMG team catches up with the Soviet riflemen, the sergeant orders his men to make a break for the forest. Hmm. The Finns quickly strap on their skis, flying oh. through the forest to keep pace with their retreating foes. The Soviets yeah, make no it to thanks. the opposite side of the woods, and the Finnish squad leader suddenly signals a halt. He knows the area. As the Soviets rush through the forest, looking back to ensure the Finns aren't following, they come upon a frozen lake. In their panic, oh they don't gosh. think to check the ice. What the hot lead of the Finnish infantry couldn't accomplish, the icy waters of the Kola River soon will. Is this like legit? <laughs> Come on, the I would not go into the, the first frozen match water. Through their superior usage of guerrilla tactics and knowledge of the terrain. Especially okay. in the early years of the Winter War, the Soviets deployed without winter clothing and camouflage, the reds, greens, Oof. and browns of their uniforms making them easy targets in the endless white of the Finnish tundra. Overconfidence and inexperience among Soviet officers would hmm. often lead to disaster, such as here, when the Soviet sergeant thought he was saving his squad by pulling back into the trees and instead sent his men into an icy grave. Of Not the brightest the idea. Use of skis at the conclusion of the match, reflecting their high. That to be honest, I mean, even as a normal soldier, if someone's telling me to go across this like really sketchy icy river, probably wouldn't do it. But hey, mobile disposition know. throughout You're the desperate. war. If the Soviets hadn't blundered upon a frozen river, it's likely the Finns would have overtaken them with their ski troops. With mm -hmm. this match decided. Let's see if the Soviets can eke out a win in a more conventional engagement. Okay, let's see it. So I guess still this is still winter war period. Yep. Vuonna 1918 päihitti Uljas Paroni Mannerheim kommunistit, jotka uhkasivat repiä maamme kappaleiksi. Tänä päivänä virassaan maamme puolustusvoimain komentajana Paroni Mannerheim pitää edelleen loitolla stalinistien vihamieliset hyökkäykset sivistyneellä puolustuslinnakkeiden verkostollaan Karjalan kannaksi. Man, the Finnish language is crazy. Mannerheim-linjallamme. Toisin kuin Maginot linjan joustamattomat bunkkerit ja linnoitukset, Mannerheim linja koostuu juoksuhaudoista ja katetuista tuliasemista, jotka mm. on mäkiin ja maaperän eri osiin kaivettu. Some trench warfare, I guess. A little salt. suunnitelmaan sisällytetty siten, että olemassa olevat kivenjärkäleet ja kaatuneet puut on tehty osaksi esteitä ja suojia, jotka <laughs> okay. on maahan neuvostovihollisiamme varten levitetty. Huh, Nämä cool. yksinkertaiset maarakennelmat tekevät mahdolliseksi sen, että rohkeat sotilaamme voivat jatkuvasti toimia joustavasti ja siirtyä asemapaikasta toiseen vastatakseen vihollisen liikkeisiin. Se on saavutus, joka on mahdoton Ranskan monimutkaisille betoniverkostoille. Huh. Tämä on se rannikko, jolla Neuvostoliiton laajentumispyrkimysten verenpunainen aalto... Okay, I don't know if this is like actually audio from some battle or something, but it is really impressive and this animation does a really good job of being able to picture it, so... I'm getting to believe that it's not actually old footage or old audio and that they actually just did it for the video. And if that's the case, then that's even more impressive. All right, let's see it. Little trench assault. As the first shells of the Soviet bombardment fall, the Commissar reminds the squad he's attached to of their dedication to the Soviet Union and their responsibility <laughs> to their fellow workers. With the propaganda out of the way, the squad leader orders his men to charge. Interesting the Soviet start. conscripts fill the air with their famous war cry. A Finnish squad takes up positions in the trenches as oh the Soviets gosh. surge forward, opening fire with their rifles. They take cover be behind rocks and fallen trees, stymied by a line of barbed wire strung among the debris of the forest. They're 
Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, if they're putting up obstacles, they're not going to provide cover or they're not going to leave things to provide cover or they're not going to put the, the C wire or the barbed wire in a position that the enemy could easily push up and just, you know, use trees and rocks for cover. They're usually going to set it up a little bit more deliberately. And I mean, if you're trying to go through an obstacle like this, just charging into the wire is probably not the best idea. I'm not sure if that was actually, you know, the tactics they use, but yeah, I'm not sure this is the best start for this sort of scenario. DP opens up on the Finnish trench, attempting to force the defenders' heads down, but it's quickly answered by a Finnish Maxim gun stationed in the bunker. Ooh. A lone Soviet manages to cut through the wire, clearing the way for his fellows, only to easy. be strafed by the Finnish KP-31. The Maxim a long has way the to Soviet go. machine gun well and truly suppressed, isolating mm. the Russians between the trench and its field of fire. The squad leader orders his men the only way they can go, forward. Grenades fly at the Finnish trench, All causing right. the Finns to scatter for cover. Three fall in the shrapnel and explosions, Dang. the rest scrambling to retake their positions as the Soviets surge forward. Nice the grenade squad placement. leader orders his men to pull back to the second trench line, and they withdraw under scattered fire from most of the gods. Okay. The Maxim team hurriedly tries to pull out of their positions, but they're taken out by the Soviets. I got. I don't know how realistic this would be. I mean, they are still in the open. Like, all you have to do is like get down, move to a different position, and pop up. Again, they are getting you know grenades thrown at them, so that's never a good time. But. Okay, I mean, it looks like the Soviets are doing pretty good in this scenario. As the last of the Finns withdraw, the Soviets level their rifles and are engulfed in flames. The rearmost Finns pelt the trench with Molotovs, turning oh, the dugout snap. into a fire pit. The Soviet squad Ouch. leader orders his surviving men to halt and is immediately set upon by the Commissar. As the Finns open fire with their rifles and SMG, the Commissar exhorts his charge forward for the glory and survival of the USSR. But the squad leader orders a withdrawal to a better position. The Commissar says this is unacceptable, they must attack, but the squad leader formally orders his men to reposition in the west in an attempt to flank the Finns. All right, good the call. The Commissar draws his handgun. A frontal charge must be ordered to overwhelm the Finns while they're vulnerable, or else the Commissar will shoot the sergeant where he stands. Reason his now. odds are better in battle than in an execution, the Soviet squad leader reluctantly complies. Guess I'll the die Soviet then. The Soviet rifles surge forward, circling around the flames as the Finns pick them off. Ironically, one of the first to fall is our friend, the Commissar. And with the <laughs> dead, the Soviet squad leader orders his men to cover. It's time to do ah, the sensible thing. Cut their karma. losses and pull back. That's funny. The Mannerheim line has held. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's karma is a bitch. Finland after our first two engagements. The Mannerheim line was a source of great embarrassment for the Soviets as hmm. the creatively laid out defenses of simple earthworks and scattered reinforced bunkers combined with the naturally inhospitable terrain to create a killing <laughs> zone that claimed many Soviet yeah, I'll say. lives. Furthermore, the flexible defense used by the Finns enabled them to yield ground without fear of losing the overall integrity of their line. In this particular hmm. fight, from my understanding, I've never seen anyone else do that. In like, I mean, World War One was pretty big for trench warfare, but I've never seen like them build the trenches around like the earthworks and sort of using the earth like that. I mean, again, it makes sense. And then making like those echelons of the different trenches. I'm pretty sure we had that in World War One, but again, having it use the earth and whatnot probably made it a little bit quicker. Right. The Soviets were hamstrung by their commissar's insistence on a frontal assault, a tactic closely associated with the Soviets, though not as ubiquitous as popular media would have us believe. In mm. reality, the Mannerheim line held out so well that it forced Soviet planners to fundamentally alter their goals in the Winter War and ultimately allowed Finland to end the war by ceding territory rather than being totally annexed by the USSR. Mm. But this was not the last time the Soviets would face the Finns in battle. They would meet again in the continuation war. And it is here that we join our final battle, a door-to-door right. -door matchup in the streets of the Finnish city of Vipuri. Oh, okay, some door-to-door, -door, some CQB stuff. Oh, this is gonna be a beast. All right, so continuation war now. 
Soviet and Finnish soldiers exchange fire from the windows of high rises. Hmm. The horizon dances with the flashes of artillery and columns of fire as they hit their marks. Rubble mm. and bodies litter the streets. The Soviets have broken through to Vipuri, a key position along the Finnish defensive line. It looks like they're wearing body armor. Did the Soviets actually have body armor in World War II? Because I've not seen that, and that's kind of interesting. And are engaged in the brutal business of urban warfare. In the market square of Vipuri, Soviet troops have dug into the Round Tower, a historic mm. fortification. Opposing them, a Finnish squad has taken up a position just across the street, trying to keep the Russians in place until reinforcements can arrive. Okay. Within the tower, a group of infantry prepare to sortie. These are not common conscripts, though. This is a storm group. Ooh. Okay, here we go. Storm group, huh? Okay. Molotov cocktails. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Russians didn't use Molotov cocktails. I might be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that was like pretty much a finished thing but okay i wouldn't call that the best explosives either but maybe they're just i don't know using them for the for the dramatic animation or something hmm. This is cool. Neuvostoliiton iskujoukkojen miehet ovat paatuneita veteraaneja, joiden kokemus tekee mahdolliseksi sekunnin murto-osassa tapahtuvan päätöksenteon ja kyvyn really cool. yksilön omasta aloitteesta. We're both sides, which is really dope. The storm group pours from the side of the round tower, their DP opening up from the loopholes to cover them as they surge forward. Okay. The Soviets leapfrog from cover to cover, trading fire with the Finnish riflemen. But their PPSHs are good for little other than suppression at this range. Mm. The Finnish squad leader has been outfitted with an additional two KP-31 SMGs, but their three submachine gunners hold fire until the Soviets close distance. Okay. Experience has taught them that the KP is many things, but a substitute for an LMG is not one of them. <laughs> Good call. The storm group presses forward, the DP covering their advance as the Finnish riflemen attempt to pick them off before they can close. Jeez Louise, if the Soviets doing too get hot. into SMG range, the Finns would be facing the belching ends of the infamous burp gun. Burp A lucky gun. shot finds its mark on the DP gunner, silencing the LMG. My gosh, these Soviets are getting fucked up. What's happening here? I thought it was gonna be like pretty even, but it's but not looking like it. The storm leader orders his men to rush <laughs> as he deploys a smoke grenade. And in response, the Finnish okay. squad leader orders his KP gunners to the front. The KPs pour bullets from their deep magazines. My gosh. wildly into the smoke. And That's as the happens. gentle breeze carries the acrid fumes away, the Finns stare down their sights at an empty street. Oh, diversion. The Finnish squad Good leader call. instinctively scratches his head. Where's the charge? The Finnish squad <laughs> leader orders his men inside a building. Better to dig in one of the apartment blocks than face an enemy you can't see. Yeah, it's a good call. The Finns pull into the nearest building, gathering in the lobby to strategize. The squad leader will take two men to secure the second floor and provide overwatch, while the assistant squad leader and the rest of the squad maintain security downstairs. All right. The three inch up the stairs, breaching the first apartment to find some very bewildered rats. As the three <laughs> fins fan out, the okay. squad leader wonders if the storm group made a break for it. He hears them below. Uh -oh. He signals the two riflemen with him, and they take cover behind overturned furniture, weapons leveled at the door. Oh, snap. Someone's coming up. Man, that was it. They just... Mow down the people on the first floor? The door inches open. A stick grenade tumbles into the room. Ooh. 
When his vision clears, the business end of a PPSH is leveled right between his eyes. Ouch. Wow. The Soviets take our final match of our trio of battles, bringing mm. the overall score to 2-1, Finland. Though they gave urban warfare little thought in their initial tactical manuals, the Soviets quickly became experts in the subject following their hard-won mm. victories at Stalingrad and elsewhere, where the okay. concept of the Storm Group was developed and tested. It is this experience that gave them the edge in the streets of Vipuri, leaving the Finns no hope to match Soviet tenacity and experience in this challenging battlefield. But and while guns. the Soviets proved dominant in an urban setting, Overall, it is the Finns who we believe fielded the superior squad. The Finns' highly mm. maneuverable units enabled them to ski circles around the Russians, fighting equally well Literally, as the infantry guess. or flexible defenders of the Mannerheim line. Do you agree with our assessment? Let us know in the comments along with any suggestions you might have for future matchups. Hmm. Okay, I, I, this is pretty much on par with what we've seen and at least what I've heard from y'all telling me about how the Finnish squads compared with the Soviets, but it is really cool. I do like how they have different scenarios. I like how they had scenarios in general, as opposed to just doing like this gear versus that gear. It's kind of cool. And again, I'm not sure if these battles specifically have any sort of historical context, but it is really cool. And then, so we saw the Winter War, we saw the Continuation War, and then we were, they were talking about the Storm Group, which I had no idea was a thing. And it's kind of cool. I didn't know that the that they actually advanced their tactics because they realized the whole commissar thing wasn't really working out too well. So they actually developed that, which is kind of interesting. Again, that's not something I've heard about. And it's kind of cool to see, you know, units sort of, or not even like units, just entire militaries sort of developing and using these after action reports to make new tactics or even like new units, like, you know, the entire squad setup was completely different. So it is kind of cool. Again, they did have the, you know, the PPSH or whatever you want to call it. It's the burp gun. They did have those, so that kind of helped, especially with CQB. But yeah, this is really cool. Again, it might not be totally accurate for each specific scenario, especially for me, considering like what, four guys going and taking on like 10 on the first floor, probably not going to work out too well, at least like how we saw it. But I mean, it is kind of cool to sort of get the gear spinning as far as how it might have gone down. But yeah, this is a cool video. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section. If you have any other videos from the Armchair Historian that you'd like to recommend, you can throw those down below as well. But I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Honestly, I love the historical stuff. And when it's an animation, it's just that much more pleasant to watch and it makes it that much more easier to take in. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. That is it for this one. I will see you on the next one. Thank you.